Well, a quark can never exist by itself in isolation. Something very odd happens when you try to separate them. The energy it takes to break up those two best friends is just enough. Have you ever been walking down a corridor and hear a sound from a room? And you don't know how that sound gets out the room because while the door is open, surely the sound should be absorbed by the walls and just not be able to reach your ears. This can be explained by diffraction. When a wave has to travel through a gap, it has to bend in order to fit through the gap. This bending is called diffraction. Imagine you have two tables and a row of people linking up. Now this row of people need to get to the other side of the two tables. And by that, they have to either go through the middle of the table or over the table. The middle two can just go straight between the gap in the table, but the others have to climb over the table so it makes them slower. With either end slower, it makes a bend in the chain. It is the same principle with waves and diffraction. Imagine the same thing, but with a smaller gap between the tables. This time everyone is slowed down, especially the people on the end. So it makes less of a bend, but more of a curve on the ends. So to put it in terms of waves, if there's a small gap and a big wavelength, there's only going to be a little bit of diffraction. And if there's a big gap and a small wavelength, there is also just going to be a little bit of diffraction. But if the wavelength is equal, so there's a small gap and a small wavelength, or a big gap and a big wavelength, then there will be maximum diffraction, which is where the wave bends the most. So to recap, equal wavelength and gap is maximum diffraction. A big gap in a small wavelength or a small gap in a big wavelength means that the wave will only bend a little bit at the ends. So the key points are that maximum diffraction occurs when the wavelength is about equal to the gap. It's also good to keep in mind that the wavelength doesn't change as it travels through the gap and bends. So now you can explain why you can hear a sound when you're outside of a room or around a corner. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and keep on asking curious questions about the world we live in.